I recently conducted a deep dive on Twitter to uncover some of the most disturbing and terrifying things that are at the core of the site that Elon claimed to change for the better. These topics are not discussed as often as they should be. From the easy access of child to the slow replacement of humans with AI driven solely by greed. Funny enough, Elon Musk once said it was extremely concerning that Instagram connects vast pedophile networks. However, not once have I ever seen Elon Musk acknowledge the countless articles talking about how easily accessible child is here on Twitter, or how there are people on Twitter running ads for their adult on a bunch of accounts, or how bots are slowly taking over the entire site under any and all popular blue checkmark tweets. Follow me down a rabbit hole of an absolute mess of a site that is only headed for absolute destruction. I recently was listening to a podcast, The Yard. One of the hosts, Ludwig, had mentioned that retweet culture, as he had put it, is one of the worst parts of Twitter. He isn't wrong at all. But to better expand on his point, let's talk about a common issue you have most likely seen in the past. As an example, let's go ahead and use a very specific tweet. A user with roughly 60,000 followers posts a video from the video game Spider-Man 2 after it had lost Game of the Year to Baldur's Gate 3. The tweet gets maybe 50,000 views, and the person who posted it is probably scratching their head as to why that is. It left the intended audience. Sure, the post was probably bait, but it was meant for a few thousand people that weren't likely to fully engage with it regardless. Upon checking the quote retweets, you notice someone with 10 times the follow count quoted your post, calling you stupid for your take. You check back later, and a bunch of other quotes begin to appear, all of them echoing the same sentiment, some even being word-for-word -word copies of the others, but they all have more followers, leading to your post garnering 50 million views by the end of it all. So. Why was your post suddenly put on blast before the entire gaming community on Twitter? Simple. Your tweet was recommended to one person with a following that mixed with a bunch of other followings. They saw this tweet as an opportunity for more engagement farming. Little did they know, it would also grant you some engagement farming. But how did your tweet even land on this person's page to begin with? They don't follow you. They don't even follow anyone who does follow you. There are probably millions of tweets on this subject, so why is it that this tweet left its intended audience? Candidate sourcing. You see, according to Twitter Hunter's blog, people you don't follow, or out of network tweets, make up 50% of the tweets that you see on a given day. And there are two approaches that Twitter takes to find out if a tweet will be relevant to you or not, despite you not following the poster. Social Graph. These currently serve about 15% of home timeline tweets. For this, two things are taken into consideration. What tweets did the people I follow recently engage with? Who likes similar tweets to me? And what else have they recently liked? The tweets resulting to this are then ranked using a logistic regression model. GraphJet, a graph processing engine that maintains a real-time interaction graph between users and tweets. If you're curious about how this social graph looks, I will link the PDF in the description that goes over the real-time content recommendations at Twitter. This is all fairly outdated information, however, there hasn't been a whole lot of change to the overall algorithm of Twitter since Elon Musk acquired it. He only stated that he would reveal the algorithm of Twitter, not change it. Embedding spaces. This works on content similarities. What tweet and users are similar to your interests? This is done with the help of embeddings. Embeddings work by generating numerical representations of users' interests and tweets' content. 
we can then calculate the similarity between the above tweet and a user's interest using the following. Any two users, someone's followers seeing someone else's tweet, any two tweets, accounts following a topic related to the tweet being shown, and user tweet pairs, people that follow a name mentioned in the above tweet. Oftentimes, this is a brand. I'll go ahead and let one of the authors of the sim clusters explain how this works. However, a simple explanation would be as follows. In simple words, the algorithm uses your content to categorize you with other similar users and creates clusters. This helps your tweets reach those who aren't already following you. Now that we got that out of the way, let's discuss the problem with all of the above. Engagement baiting, which is where our buddy Ludwig's point really should be. You see, going back to our original tweet we discussed, the tweet might not have really truly been bait. It might have been their honest to God opinion. However, if it was intended to bait a certain audience, it really did hit its goal and in doing so resulted in possible monetary gain. With Twitter Blue, you must receive 5 million impressions for at least 3 months to receive any payout. However, it isn't per impression that you are paid by. You're paid for ad revenue per impression, if that makes more sense. So for every thousand impressions, you receive on a single tweet one cent. If I recall correctly, the Spider-Man tweet we talked about had 51.7 million impressions, which equates to roughly $439. This is a loop created by the algorithm for people to make money off baiting people's emotions. The more people that retweet your post in a fit of rage, the more likely your tweet is to receive more and more engagement, which is in turn more likely to give you a bigger payout. That is the reason why quote retweeting tends to be so horrendous, and why it is that you will more than likely see tweets that are made with the intention of provoking an emotional response from you. The best thing for many users to do on Twitter is to stop engaging with these kinds of posts, and just let them wither away. However, most people who do engage themselves are often looking for the same result, a payout. But this whole thing continues to go even deeper. An entire ring of people who are utilizing this knowledge to pretty much guarantee a payout, but without farming off your emotions. The interesting thing about all of this is that you can utilize the information I have given you to understand how it is and why it is that bots on Twitter exist. There exists a group of people on Twitter who are all utilizing ChatGPT and the Open Twitter API to create a plethora of bots to constantly comment on posts by users who have the highest amount of traffic based on their following. Spend any amount of time on Twitter and you will see a comment section flooded with people responding to a tweet with something that has nothing to do with the original content. Or oftentimes, they will respond with something that somewhat feels on topic with what the original content was. However, the response feels so far from what a normal human would respond with. You might even see people responding to tweets with simply link in bio or my pussy in bio. And this will be the only time that I will deter from a serious topic to let you laugh. Elon Musk recently tweeted on the 3rd of April that the organic traffic of Twitter has reached an all-time peak, showing it has reached 3.3 billion as of 2024. I would really like to know where it is that he got the organic part, as I am certain that 90% of the users that have appeared since Elon bought Twitter are bots. This is mostly because of a rise in the use of ChatGPT and AI in general, but it also has to deal with the fact that Elon has completely changed the algorithm of Twitter to the point where your most controversial tweet is going to blow up and get views. 
but we're getting sidetracked. Now, many people will be quick to point out that Elon has stated recently, as of April 4th, that he will crack down on Twitter bots. However, I want you to know that this is not the first time that he has ever stated this. This isn't the first time that he has stated he will crack down on bots. Elon Musk does not mean that when he says it. Because he knows that the more bots and inorganic traffic coming to his site, then the more money he receives from advertisers and stockholders, and the more he can claim that he has saved Twitter and boosting his ego. He will continue to boast how he saved Twitter while only showing inflated numbers to prove it. As we all know, this is merely the same as a pufferfish getting big and puffy to make itself seem intimidating. It's all just air. I can guarantee you with the utmost certainty that Elon Musk does not intend to keep his promise on deleting bots. So long as he keeps the Twitter API public, there will be no way of stomping out the bots, and he knows he can't do that as it continues to help inflate his own tweets, his own fragile and weakening ego. Mind you, before Elon Musk had even bought Twitter, this was a problem that was definitely quickly rising, and a problem that you can tell Elon Musk knew he wanted to capitalize on. We'll get to that later. The following are excerpts from an article from Slate. Before Elon Musk even agreed to buy Twitter, he was talking a lot about bots. If our Twitter bid succeeds, we will defeat the spam bots or die trying, he tweeted one day. Following that tweet, he would ironically respond to it with, and authenticate real humans. In a funny argument with Stephen King, who did not want to pay to retain his checkmark, Elon Musk first told the truth. We need to pay the bills somehow. Twitter cannot rely entirely on advertisers. Indeed, especially given that the new Twitter had alienated so many advertisers. The lie came next, when Musk said that paid verification on Twitter was the only way to defeat the bots and the trolls. As stated in the article, Elon told the truth at first by stating that he needs to somehow pay for his awful investment into Twitter. Because of this, he would then give everyone the ability to have the infamous blue check mark so long as you were to pay for Twitter Blue, which is only $11 a month. However, he would follow it up by stating that it was the only way to, quote, defeat the bots and trolls, unquote, knowing full well that what he is saying is the opposite outcome that a paid Twitter Blue would have. Twitter's API has been public since its inception, and because of this, bots have roamed the site forever. Elon is fully aware of this, and he knows he can use that to his advantage. Whether it was intentional or not, he knew that if he were to make Twitter Blue a paid service, there would be an increase in bots and trolls using Twitter Blue to get their tweets seen more often. And I think he proved to have known this when he implemented creator payouts. As we had mentioned in the previous part of this video, creators can receive a payment of one cent per thousand impressions. Anyone with access to the open API of Twitter and open AI can easily create a bot account that farms impressions off popular tweets. And this is something that just about anyone can do, even with a basic understanding of coding. In fact, there are several videos on how to do so on YouTube. The following video I am showing you is by creator WestGPT, in which he shows you how to create a ChatGPT run bot in 10 minutes using Autoblogger. There's even a video from two years ago, well before Elon Musk bought Twitter, from a user named Fireship, in which he created one entirely for free. But I hear some of you asking, what about the Twitter reply bots? This doesn't allow me to create one of those, does it? Well. You're in luck, as WestGPT also has a video on how to create a Twitter bot that replies to specifically Elon Musk's tweets. Anyone can do this. It doesn't take a genius in coding to find a site or an eight minute long YouTube video detailing how you can create one yourself with ease. Sure, some of them require you to spend a little bit of money, 
but given how much money some people make off of this, it's close to nothing. Because of how easy it is to create a bot, you have Facebook groups like this one, dedicated to not only people showing how much money they have been able to make off of their bots, but also telling other people how it is that they can make more money off of the same bots that they've created by farming the most popular Twitter users. It's interesting how easily you can find these bots by just scrolling through a tweet posted by someone with a huge following. They flood the replies with nonsensical tweets unrelated to the topic at hand. Sometimes you'd end up on a morbid tweets account, and you'd find yourself scrolling through a bunch of random tweets of popular videos you'd find on your mom's Facebook account that she shared twice in one day from two separate accounts. These bots are a plague on the site, and they're so easy to create. However, it's so easy to spot them by the way that they speak, and by simply typing in, I'm sorry, but I cannot generate a response to that in the Twitter search bar. Elon Musk has completely doomed Twitter, and he is fully aware of it. He won't stomp out the bots, but he will continue to give them opportunities to grow and flourish. I imagine soon Grok will become an open AI as well, and you can use that to generate responses for your bot account. Elon Musk will continue to complain that his own innovations are killing Twitter when they're helping, and that others are helping when they're killing it. This is the reason why Elon's Twitter is truly the death of Twitter, and maybe the internet as a whole. This last part is more of a rant, and something that I originally was going to script and actually do a lot of research on, and do a lot of deep diving. However, I decided against it for one specific reason. There was an epidemic on Twitter where CP was so easy to find and to come across without even having to go out of your way to look for it, which not that you should, but that's the problem. However, as it is something that I personally do not want to deal with whatsoever, I have decided completely against that part of the video. However, I think it is something I need to talk about because it is an issue. For starters, I want to talk about a very popular and very problematic part of Twitter, the NSFW side of Twitter, also known as NSFW Twitter. Many of these people are not verified for their age, and a lot of them post nudes, and a lot of these are likely CP, and it's disgusting how many people are able to get away with that as Elon Musk doesn't allow you to actually verify your age like you should. There was a recent bill passed here in Texas requiring you to put in your ID whenever accessing porn sites. And of course, that's something that I 100% support, as it is definitely something that I feel is a guarantee for keeping children away from porn. That doesn't mean that people aren't still going to distribute CP on X but it is at least one step closer to children not exploiting themselves. Recently, there were even reply bots that were generating CP in the replies, and that is something that should be completely banned, and another reason why these bots should absolutely stop existing, because this isn't the first time, and it won't be the last, and it will definitely get worse if Elon Musk doesn't finally do something. And that is where I decide I will end the video. Please, please, keep the conversation going. Thank you.